should you get and build limb? Short answer, probably yes. Long answer. This entire video. I hope I won't have to explain to you what we mean by necessary methods. Let's put them six feet under. Linusia, the daughter of the Lungman Underworld Rat King, and a childhood friend of Operator Swaran Chen. She is the president of the Lungman Young Entrepreneurs Association. Special guest lecturer of social studies at the Lungman Union University. One of the Lungman Federation of Enterprises rotating spokesmen. And consultant to the Lungman Market Regulation Authority. With other expertise such as interior design, Yan culture, and history. Also skilled in combat with an outstanding arts assimilation. With her achievement and composed personality. She's often praised as the perfect embodiment of elegance and dignity of Yan niece. But get on her bad side, and you might find yourself six feet under. After the human incident came to an end she proposed to Rhodes Island the formation of a formal cooperative agreement, and become an operator, assisting us with the treatment of the infected populace in Lungman. Wow, for a young lady she got one hell of a achievement. I feel bad for the kids in her neighborhood. Anyway, Lin Yuzha is our second six star phalanx after Carnelian. Phalanx has proved to be a good range tank unit. And good AoE damager, so how about Lin? Well, let's see all about her first. As a phalanx caster, she won't attack unless her skill is active. However, her defenses tripled and got plus 20 resistance when idle. And when her skill is active, she will attack all enemies in her range. Making her or phalanx in general, a good crowd handler and tank unit. But when her skill is active she will lose all the defensive bonuses. Phalanx may or may not become a reliable bait unit. They are stacked with defensive stats minus the HP. But they are not any better than most ranged units when their skill is active. And attacking only when their skill is active. Could be troublesome especially if the said unit has a big SP cost. Now this is Lin's stats, but this is only the base stats or when using skill. While this is her stats when she is idle. Compared to Carnelian, Lin only slightly wins in defense. But luckily focusing on defense will do Lin more good. Now this is her talent. Her talent 1 is the most important aspect of her. And synergies very well with her tray as a phalanx. This talent also makes Lin the best range tank unit in general. It bolsters her defense by creating a crystal barrier that blocks all kinds of damage. As long as it doesn't exceed 200 point. If that happens it breaks. But instantly deals damage and briefly stuns all enemies in range. Which makes Lin got an ability to attack an enemy when her skill isn't active. Due to how the crystal barrier work. The bigger her defense or resistance the higher the chance the crystal won't break. So be careful when using her skill. As for talent 2. This talent makes Lin speak hit me, and faster the loudest among other phalanx. And why you should place her last and use her as a bait. Her best skill does have a pretty high SP cost. So giving her a chance to gain 1 SP when she got attacked is useful. But sadly it's only 1 SP, and the chance to trigger it is one hell of a gamble. Not reliable when she is attacked by only one enemy especially when they're slow. Luckily. Her module will fix that. However it is still useless if there's no one to attack her. This is her potential. Second talent enhancement is unnecessary. If you aim to upgrade her module. But getting her to pot 5 sounds good. To multiply her crystal barrier damage. Now this is her module. It will be available in the episode 12 update. As of now. All phalanx got their X module which did justice to their survivability when using skill. And compared to other phalanx, Lin got the most out of her module. This X module will increase Lin's defensive bonuses. And she retained some of the bonuses when using skill. As well as increasing her attack and defense stats. The effect and stats suits her. 
and works extremely well with her talent one to keep her crystal from breaking. It's a must to unlock not just because it makes her tankier. But the upgrade is also worth your material. The upgrade will enhance her second talent. In level 2 it will make Lin increase the SP she got by 2. While level 3 increases the chance for it to be active to 75% or 80% with part 5. Making it significantly reliable to boost her SP. This module is simply a game changer for Lin. If you use her often, you should unlock and upgrade once it release. Now let's talk about her skills. Skill 1 can make Lin use this state where she will always attack an enemy. With attack boost and slow enemies in each attack for a sec. But at the cost of her interval slightly increase. And she loses all of her trade defensive bonuses. This is a good early skill. For someone who needs an AoE caster to keep attacking non-stop. Especially for newbie who aren't yet comfortable with how her subclass work. The slow is not constant, but it does slow all enemies who got hit. It's also a perfect skill to be used in triple S mode. And early IS mode, particularly if you got her some attack speed buff. While changing her to this state does lower her tankiness. But it has cheap SP cost. So you can easily switch when you want her to attack or tanking hits. And if you got her module, you might don't need to switch back at all. Next up, skill 2 is kind of a defense support skill. It increases her attack speed greatly. She becomes less likely to be targeted. Which is nice since she's vulnerable when skill is active. And share her talent 1 with all units in range. Useful when her surrounding are bombarded with AoE damage or some sort. If multiple units got their shield breaking, it will be an AoE arts and stun fez. Lastly, skill 3 increases her attack, expands her attack and crystal barrier range. Triple the crystal barrier threshold at M3. And whenever she killed an enemy, the explosion from her talent 1 will active. It extremely boosts her damage output and offensive capability. Due to the damage from Crystal Barrier, this is excellent to use against crowd. Typically with a bunch of weaker mobs around the main target. But because of this, this skill is not the best option when it comes to attacking only a single enemy. And boy, 50 SP cost is absurd for this archetype. Luckily we have her talent too, but if there's no one to attack her, tough luck. But of course there's always other SP support unit like Mostama. Or Stainless for example. For which skill to master, I recommend you prioritize her skill 3. It does an insane AoE damage and stun if her crystal explosion active often. Not to mention the increase in her defenses through a stronger crystal. The mastery didn't do much to reduce her SP cost. But it gives a decent upgrade to damage and triples the crystal damage threshold at M3. Her skill 2 is actually very interesting, but the master regain is quite disappointing. For the base skill, skill 1 increases the recruitment tag refresh rate, and reduces her morale consumption. And skill 2 further increases the generation rate by 10%, for every recruitment slot excluding the initial one. Well folks that's all about Lin. An excellent bait and AoE arts unit. That could prove to be useful for veteran and newbie. She might be a bit weak now without module. But Lin post module provides a unique and significant tank utility. For newbie she offers a good DPS option and utility to tank enemy hits. Her biggest downside is definitely due to her S3 damage depends on her barrier shatter. And her skill can take quite a long time if the enemy is not actively attacking her. She won't shine in every stages. But ranged enemies and crowds are quite common especially in the upcoming content. And having Lin will prove to be useful. Not to mention her debut banner is a good banner to pull. Where you can get Chongyu, a limited and solid ground unit. That should be all. Adios.